The game has changed, my friends. The marketing game, specifically in cosmetics, is different than it was pre-lockdown. Cosmetic marketing is more manipulative and more sneaky than I feel like I have ever seen it be. And a lot of that has to do with the way that people are consuming their cosmetic recommendations. You know how when things change so slowly that you don't necessarily notice that something has changed, that something is different? This video is the wake up call. This video is meant to help you to see the things that maybe you didn't realize were happening to make you buy crap that you don't need. One of the reasons why I believe that things are so different is that post lockdown, we are consuming as a whole different kinds of content than they, we were pre lockdown. And the way that brands and influencers are marketing to us now is very different than it was four or five years ago. A lot of the information that we're getting as consumers is now through short form content versus the long form content that we used to watch more often in the pre lockdown lockdown days. And because of that, brands are coming at our wallets differently. The strategies are different. But like I was saying, the, it's, the changes happen so slowly that I feel like a lot of people, including myself, until I sat down to really look at this topic, I didn't realize how different it really is and how we need to shift our awareness of what's happening in front of us to make sure we are spending our money wisely. Because let's be honest, in this economy, we need to make sure that we are protecting our wallets. Wallets. So today I'm going to talk about five traps that I identified as I really looked into cosmetic marketing, really thinking about my experience 12 years on this platform, my experience as a consumer of makeup, as a deep consumer of makeup for 12 years, watching what my subscribers say and what they're tricked into buying and kind of synthesizing all of that into these five traps that I've noticed. And I'm my goal of this video is to help you to identify these traps in your own lives. Really think about whether you're falling for them, whether you're falling into these traps so that you can avoid them and make the most out of your money. You work hard for your money and everybody wants it. <laughs> everybody wants it. And I want you to feel good about where your money goes. And that's the purpose of identifying these traps. So if you are interested in learning a little bit more about the backside of influencer marketing and how that might affect what you're seeing, seeing, I would love for you to keep watching. Hang tight. We're getting into it right now. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to Gen Love, which is my channel where we mostly do makeup news, but we also talk about things that are happening right now in the cosmetic space. And I feel like right now, marketing is just something that is so different than it used to be. And it affects all of us. Anybody that purchases makeup, it affects all of us. So I, so I thought this would be a, a good way to kind of all get on the same page and make sure we're all working together to help each other. This video is actually inspired by a channel that just crossed my feed recently. Her channel is called Social Simone, and she has a few videos about this particular topic. The one that brought me in was the one that she talked specifically about Sephora. Highly, highly recommend her channel. If you like this topic, it will be linked down below for you. It's time to talk about our first trap, and it has to do with the evolution of the honest review. Of course, there are still some classic YouTube and Instagram makeup reviewers that really want to bring you detailed, honest reviews so that you can make the best purchasing decision possible. Unfortunately, the number of those people is dwindling. There are less and less of those people on this platform, on YouTube, and especially on Instagram and TikTok. There's very few of them. And the reason why I think this is, is based on what I have seen and because of talking to people in the industry, the honest review is not rewarded the same way that it was. The honest review is not in the best interest 
of the person creating the content when it comes down to it. If you're trying to make social media your job, your career, the honest review is only going to hurt you in the long run. You're either going to flatline, meaning that you are not going to grow, you're not gonna shrink, you're just gonna stay at one level. You may grow very slowly, but overall, there are very few people, there are some, but there are very few people that can grow a channel off of honest reviews. On the other hand, it is much easier to produce commercials. Not only is it easier, but it is much more lucrative. It is much more in the influencer's interest to speak positively about a product than provide a critical review. Allow me to explain. Let's say you're a brand and you see the sea of people. And in the sea of people, there are different content strategies and you have to decide who you are going to support. And that support could be through reposting their content. It could be through sending people are for free for the reviewer to try and to put out onto social media, or it could be in the form of sponsored posts where they're actually paying the influencer in order to talk about their products. In general, to oversimplify, there are two different types of creators. There's the spokesperson and then there is the reviewer. The spokesperson is going to speak about your brand as if it were a commercial. The reviewer is going to give both positives and negatives to your product, to their audience. They may love it. They may have things that they think could be better, but in the end, they're going to give their personal opinion about the product accurately, whether it's good or bad. What it comes down to from the brand is which type of influencer is going to get people to buy your products. Where are those clicks coming from? Where are those purchases coming from? Are they coming from the spokesperson or are they coming from the reviewer? This is where things have changed because pre-lockdown, we were watching a lot of long form reviews. We were looking at wear tests of the products. We wanted to see swatches. We wanted to hear about the texture we wanted of the product. We wanted to hear about the packaging. We wanted to think about the cost of it. And it was all in these long form videos that were 20, 30 minutes long on one product so we could really get a handle on it before we made a purchase. That has changed. Now, a lot of people, again, I'm not saying everybody, it's not absolute, but a lot of people are looking for that short form content. They wanna know in a minute or less whether this product is good or not. And how they're being presented by these spokespeople is to quickly apply the product, blend it in if it's a blush or apply it, and if it's a lipstick or whatever it may be, just applying the foundation and leaving it on for two or three minutes, maximum if it's a foundation. We're looking at that initial application in order to make purchasing decisions because it's fast and we just don't have time for a long form video anymore. We want that information and we want it now. And it's those short form first impression applications that are getting that return on investment, that ROI for brands. It's those videos that are getting brands their money. So that is where brands are investing their money. It just to make sense. They don't have feelings. They're not really concerned about who's a better person. They're concerned about where they're going to get their money back. And it is all run by the consumer. The consumer is the one who decides. And when people were consuming more long form content, it didn't matter whether it was a glowing review or not. It didn't have to be 100% positive because the consumer could see the layers of the product and whether the negative for the influencer was a negative for them or not. And it would still encourage purchases. But if you're doing that kind of content where there are negatives in a short form way, it doesn't feel as positive. There isn't enough time to really resonate on the good parts of the product. Therefore, those honest reviews don't generate as much sales as the ones that are basically a commercial. The other thing that's changed is the idea of a shill. <laughs> because do you remember when we were watching a lot of long form content and if a creator loved everything, they would be called a shill. They weren't trusted. They were somebody that customers didn't trust because they just loved everything. But because there isn't as much attachment to the individual influencer because when we're on TikTok or Instagram stories, we're just going like this. It, there is 
isn't as much emotional attachment and we don't notice that this particular person always loves everything because we don't even necessarily know who they are. We just know that they're applying this product and it looks nice on them. So maybe it'll look nice on me and it doesn't really matter whether this is something this person does all of the time just for money. And even if we do know who the person is, because they are obsessed, because they're beautiful, because they're popular, people just trust them. And it is this need for speed over detail that is pushing the return on investment, that is pushing the advertising money to go over to the spokesperson and the short form content versus the reviewer and the long term content. And in that, it is much, much, much more lucrative to be a spokesperson than it is a reviewer. And people don't care about being called a shill anymore because it doesn't affect their bottom line. They are still overall making a lot more than their reviewing counterparts. And what makes this more confusing and what makes it a trap is that the people that are the salespeople are presenting themselves as reviewers. They are trying it on and, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I've never tried anything like this before. This is such a fantastic product. And people are associating the salesmanship, the marketing, the commercial for an actual real review. Their brains haven't switched over yet to I am being marketed to versus this is this person's genuine opinion. And that's the trap. That's the trap right there, is thinking that someone who is a salesperson is a reviewer, that they have your best interests at heart, that they have your pocket at heart, when really it has to do with growing their own social channels, growing their own wallets, and supporting the brands rather than supporting you. And to be very clear, there have been salespeople in the makeup space for as long as I have been attending to the makeup space, as long as there has been social media, that has been happening. Well, Maybe not when people were in their bedrooms and brands didn't even notice, but as soon as brands started noticing, then people were realizing that that was the way to get brand attention was to produce commercials. But the difference is, is they couldn't get away with it before because they were called shills and then they weren't trusted. So they had to build in some negatives in there in order to sound credible. Now, salespeople don't even have to build in any negatives anymore. They can just be 100% positive, grow their social channels channels without any criticism or very little criticism. Not enough criticism to make a difference. Let's just say that. And they're not going to tell you that they're producing a commercial. They're not going to tell you that they are a salesperson. It's on us as consumers to identify that. So in order to avoid this trap, let us all make a pact. <laughs> if, you, if you care about this, we're gonna make a pact right now that we are going to, as we are watching a product being marketed to us, we are going to ask ourselves the simple question. Do I think that this person is presenting this product because they care about my wallet because they're trying to give me good information or are they just trying to sell me a product and really let that resonate before making a purchase to be clear there is nothing wrong with being a salesperson there is absolutely nothing wrong to having your platform be about selling but as consumers we need to make sure we are consciously aware and I, this is me too being consciously aware that there is a difference between a commercial and an honest review and to make sure to make that distinction before making that purchase the way that social media has evolved too many of us are mistaking commercials and thinking that they are actual reviews and in that we are are developing a strong parasocial relationship with these salespeople. And in that parasocial relationship with salespeople, we are thinking to ourselves, I want to purchase this in order to support this person. I want to strongly encourage you as someone that has active affiliate links, please do not do that. <laughs> do not buy something from somebody solely to support unless you are very conscious that that is what you are doing. And that is a choice and you're doing it on purpose. Your bills and your personal wants and needs in your life should always, in my opinion, be the priority. Always. 
let's say you do have some extra cash and you want to support your favorite influencers through a financial means. You want to encourage them to continue producing content by supporting them in one way or another. I want to share with you what is the most impactful for actually supporting influencers, both free options and ways that you can spend your money that would actually support creators. And this is just from my personal perspective and the things that I have experienced. So it may be different for different creators. The number one way that I feel is impactful for supporting creators is through their sponsorships. Sponsorships are the most lucrative thing for content creators. When a creator says, thank you so much to so-and-so for partnering with me on this video or for sponsoring this video, that is the most amount of money that's coming in. So purchasing the product that goes along with that sponsorship is the number one way to support your favorite creators. The thing about that though, is some of these sponsorships are expensive. Some of the things that you are asked to invest in in order to support are very expensive. So definitely, again, we're prioritizing ourselves. <laughs> We're prioritizing our hard-earned money and our wallet. And if this is a product that you genuinely don't want, genuinely don't need, genuinely cannot afford, you absolutely should not be purchasing it. And when I say that, I'm saying it purchasing it solely just to support a creator. When people do choose to buy something associated with a sponsorship through a link, through a code, that does increase the chances that the creator is going to get a repeat sponsorship and in that way earn more money with the brand. So that is number one. The second one is the affiliate link purchases. And with that, it is a much softer blow to the wallet of the customer, especially if the customer genuinely wants the product. How that works is there are many affiliate link companies. Some of them are like Reward Style, Magic Links, ShopMy, Howl. There are a bunch of them. You'll know it's probably an affiliate link if it's not a direct link to the website. It's not Sephora.com slash whatever or, you know, BareMinerals.com or what. Chances are, if it doesn't directly say the link, it is probably an affiliate link. Some people do use Bitly's in order to keep the character count down in the description box because we only have a certain number of characters we can use down there. But for the most part, they're going to be affiliate links if there's links in the video description. Through these affiliate links, influencers earn anywhere from like 3% commission all the way to 15, 20% commission and even more than that, depending on the program. And the best part for the customer Customer on this is it doesn't cost the customer any extra money. It is the exact same price for the customer. It is only rewarding the creator as a referral affiliate link. In my opinion, the only way that this hurts the customer is if the purchase was made and then regretted later. If the purchase was made out of impulse, if the purchase was made just to support and for no other reason, that could potentially hurt the customer in that they're parting with their hard earned money for no benefit to themselves, unless you just want that happy feeling that you've done something to support. But if that's something you want to do, allow me to present to you the third thing that you can do to support creators, and that's to join their channel memberships or their Patreon. Those are programs that give you perks. Sometimes there's perks, sometimes like mine, there's really no perks. <laughs> It's just kind of a tip system, but also keep in mind that those programs do take a percentage of your money. So for example, with YouTube, YouTube takes 30% of your channel membership fee. The creator keeps 70%. With Patreon, it really depends on your level of what you've signed up for with Patreon, but Patreon will take anywhere from five to 12% of the subscription price. So instead of buying a product that you don't need or don't want, that could be something you could do to support creators in a very similar way. My favorite ways to support creators are the ones that are absolutely free, don't cost anybody anything, and really the affiliate link, if you really like the item and really want the item, great way to support creators, but also just clicking on the affiliate link, just clicking on the sponsorship. If you're interested, if you're genuinely interested in the product, clicking on it and kind of browsing through. And even if you don't end up buying it, that actually helps the creator because the brand can see 
see how many people actually had an interest in their product and may go back and buy it later. So that's also good, even if you don't end up buying it, but really and truly, just you sitting here watching this video right now helps me. It supports me. If you hit the thumbs up button, it tells YouTube to share it with more people so that more people have the option of clicking on it. If you leave a comment that's considered engagement, all of that is free for you to do for all of your favorite creators, especially the thumbs up button. It literally takes a second. Every time you enjoy a creator's video, just clicking that thumbs up button is really so incredibly helpful. I know it doesn't really look like it's doing much, but I promise you it really genuinely is. And another thing that people don't necessarily know about YouTube specifically is that watching videos for a longer period of time, increasing the channel's watch time really helps that channel to be pushed into more feeds to give more people the option of watching the video. Also, if you're watching more ads, then the creator is going to get more money per view. And speaking of that, if you have an ad blocker and you turn that off while you're watching your favorite creators, that's extremely helpful. Going back to the beginning of this section, you may have noticed that a lot of your favorite reviewers just are either no longer making review content anymore or they've disappeared completely. And that's because it's just not paying the bills. And the reason why it's not paying the bills is because people just aren't purchasing from those videos anymore. They're not getting as many views and they're not encouraging as many purchases. So if you decide that even after a while, you, you, you know, you realize you're going to buy this product. Oh, I remember, you know, Teresa is dead recommended this product. I'm going to go ahead and buy it. Instead of going directly to the retail website, take a second, go back to Teresa's video, click on her affiliate link, and then purchase through there. If she genuinely was the one that helped you to want to buy the product and you really, really want it. I'm using Teresa as an example because she's somebody that I know continues to stick with the honest review format. But to speak back in general, it is really difficult for all honest reviewers to make a living reviewing anymore because commercials are so prevalent and they really are bringing that return on investment to brands. Brands are reposting them. It is a love-love relationship over in the commercial land and the reviewers are kind of getting left in the dust. That can be so, so helpful to encourage those honest creators that you love to continue reviewing products because it is brutal out there when you're in competition with people who are doing genuine commercials and who are being perceived as real reviewers and are getting those commissions and are getting those brand attention and those shares and all of that and they are building and they are growing and you're sitting here being honest and you're not. So if you do value some favorite reviewers on any platform, take a second to go and use their affiliate links if you are choosing because you genuinely want a product to purchase. When Sephora or Ulta are having a big sale, do you ever wonder why there are so many freaking videos across platforms about the Sephora sale and the Ulta sale? Hello, editing Jen here. I am sitting here editing these traps and I'm realizing that for some of them, the newness of the trap kind of got lost a bit. So for example, this next trap is about the Sephora sale and about getting a status at Sephora and Ulta. And of course, those things are 100% not new. What's new about it is that the way we're being fed these things from the multiple sources in quick format with hauls and all of that. That is new in that we're being fed it in so many places so quickly, but I didn't articulate that super well. So just take the newness of the rest of the tips with a grain of salt. <laughs> They're still active traps, but they may not be as new and fresh as the very first example. With that being said, let's get on to the next trap. I'm going to tell you the secret. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> it's because Sephora and Ulta tend to bump up their commission rates during these times. They will also sometimes give creators a voucher of sorts to spend X amount of dollars on their site before the sale so that they can share things that they love before the sale. And because the creator is buying things that they intentionally purchase because they love them, the review chances are is going to be very positive and it's going to encourage sales. It's very, very smart. The other reason why these 
are on all of the channels is because Sephora and Ulta have ingrained marketing wise into customers that this is a time to buy. And because of that, there are, I will tell you, when I do not make a video of Sephora or Ulta recommendations, I get a ton of comments. Where's your recommendations? I was looking for your recommendations so I would know what to buy. So there's a lot of request to get these videos made. And what you as a consumer need to know about that is that whoever's link you click click on last before you purchase, they will get your commission for whatever you purchased during the sale. And I don't think people necessarily think about that before they make a purchase. So if there's somebody you particularly want to support during a sale and you're going to buy anyway because they're things that you genuinely want, make sure that last person you click on is who you want to get that commission because it can make a really big difference. Those commissions can go up significantly during sale times. But of course, people are smart and they are trying to manipulate the system. So you may also see during that time people who are obsessed or trying to tell you what you must have during the sale because they want you to spend money because they are going to be earning a commission and maybe they won't be so obsessed when the sale is over. So again, we have the salespeople along with the reviewers out there trying to get you to click, trying to get you to purchase. So it's making that, remember that pact we made, it's that making that conscious thought of, is this person, does this person have my best interest at heart or are they just trying to sell? sell me something. And it's also taking a minute because this is the one that gets me is taking a minute to think about what I currently have and whether this new product is going to add something new to my life. To not just buy something because it smells good because you know that's my thing. I want to smell all the smells. I buying something because it smells good or buying a new blush stick because it seems to be slightly different than the other blush sticks that you own. Chances are it's not going to look all that that different, especially if it's almost the exact same freaking shade. And when you've already found a formula that you love, whether it's a skincare product, whether it's a foundation or whatever it is, do we really need to try another thing in that category? Do we really need it? If we already have something that we love and is perfect, why are we buying more to see if something is even more perfect if we're perfectly happy with what we have? It's a trick, it's a marketing trick. The semi-annual sale trap is all about saying, well, it's 20% off now, so I'm gonna get it at 20% off instead of paying full price later. It is a trap. One of the reasons why this is a trap that you should not be falling for is because if you go to brand websites like Urban Decay, for example, that just came out the, the foundation everybody's losing their mind over, they've had, since that foundation came out, at least two 25% off sales that were site-wide over at Urban Decay. Whatever brands you love, I know it, it's painful to get mail in your inbox, I know, but that's signing up for emails for your favorite brands and shopping directly through the brands for the products that you know that you love is so much better than waiting until the Sephora sale. Because I know I am 100% guilty of this. As I am shopping for the things that I need at the Sephora sale, I'm thinking, what else do I want? What are the other things I've had my eye on that I have wanted that I can now get at 20% off and then I impulse purchase those. But if I just waited and went through the brand website, I would get, because I, I'm actually only 15% off over at Sephora, I've been, I haven't been erosion in a while, I would get 25% off of it off of the brand website instead of buying it at the Sephora sale. It just doesn't make any sense, but it's the convenience of it that you're paying for when it comes to that. Speaking of that, let's talk Sephora and Ulta statuses because that's some bullshit. That is a trap. Statuses on different purchasing websites are traps. They want you to make to make you feel like it's an actual status, that it actually makes you feel like you are better than other people, that you have a higher status, that you have earned it. You have earned like almost like a video game, you know, that you've gotten to that next level and it's like, "Oh my gosh, I've made it. I've made no it's a trap. For the sake of time, let's just talk about Sephora because I think they're a worse offender than Ulta, even though Ulta is bad too. Let's talk Sephora. So in order to earn VIB status and get 15% off at their sale, which is what I typically get, $350 in purchases throughout the year. In order to get Rouge status, it's $1,000 per year. And if the only reason why you're reaching for these levels is to feel like you have a status and to get that discount, because that's basically 
all you're getting except for maybe a slightly upgraded birthday gift, which you're not getting your ROI on this. You're not getting your return on investment guaranteed. There really isn't a whole lot of benefit to being these higher levels at Sephora. Instead of spending $500 at Sephora to get that Rouge status, let's say you pay $500 toward your Sephora credit card. I was looking at the Sephora credit card and I was floored by the APR, the annual percentage rate on that. I found out that the APR of a Sephora credit card, depending on what your credit score is, is between 23 and 32%. Oh my gosh. So they are charging you 32% for you to earn a 20% discount. It's not, it's not worth it. It's just not. People who do this, and I am not shaming you because it is a trap and it is easy to fall into traps. That's why I'm making this video. They are tricking people into giving them more money so they can save less money later. It is a trap because the question then becomes, what are you doing with these products now that you have them? Are you actually using them while they're charging you an extra $160 to use these products over the next year? Is that $500 worth of product bringing you $660 worth of joy? That's the question. And if they are, go for it. It is your money. You need to do what you want for your money. And again, I'm not going to shame you for it. Just be aware that that's what's happening to you. To sum up, Rouge status, VIB status, traps. So for annual, semi-annual sale, Ulta annual, semi-annual sale, Ulta diamond member, all that, all that, it's all traps. It's all traps. Credit cards with high APRs, traps. Like unless you genuinely need it, traps. And if you are buying things from these sales on these credit cards that, and the only reason why you're buying them is because they are on trend, that's another trap. That's the next one. I research topics for What's Up In Makeup, which is my makeup news show every single week. And I will tell you that nearly every single week, there is a new trend. Think strawberry girl trends, think clean girl trend, think uh, mob wife trend. That was a big one for a while. These are not trends. They're not trends. Clean girl maybe because I feel like just the no makeup makeup look has been around for a minute, but definitely not strawberry girl or mob wife. They're not trends, they're manufactured. They are made by companies in order to encourage you to buy things. That's why they exist. It's not because they are actual trends. They're also made so that you will click on their article so that you will read it and learn about the trend and earn them ad revenue in order to learn about the trend. That's the other reason why they exist. It's to create content for these news websites. It's to create content for people who are social media influencers so that they can show you what the latest trend is and how to create it to encourage you to buy products from certain brands so that you can be part of the trend that is actually not real. Like I was saying a second ago, the clean girl trend, I kind of feel like might be a real trend. And what I say, what I mean by real trends is things that stand the test of time. Like when you look back at a decade, what do you think of? So like in the seventies, I think of flowers and I think of bell bottoms and I think of corduroy. <laughs> I think I think of a lot of things, you know, the fl the fluffy hair or whatever. In the 90s, I think of like flannel shirts, I think of the little eyebrows, you know, it, the butterfly clips. I mean, there's certain things that were that are actual trends, but I feel like now there are forced trends that we'll just forget by the time we get to our next decade. We won't even remember the strawberry girl trend, I don't think. And trying to keep up with these trends is not a trend, it's a trap. And along with the trends that they're talking about, there's products specifically to go along with these. In order to do this trend, you need this product. And that's where we're getting the purchasing. For example, right now, I feel like cream blushes, specifically stick blushes, are everywhere. Bronzing drops everywhere. We notice these trends in What's Up In Makeup when I do the product report. It's the same kind of product coming out from so many different brands. And that's another video I want to make at some point is why, how brands all come out with the same type of product at the same time. I, I do know the answer. I, I was thinking about making that one video before this one, but it didn't I decided to do this one first, but that is in my deck of things to talk to you about is how brands know <laughs> what the trends are going to be. 
It's, it's a thing. But anyway, it's intentional. It's intentional in order to make you feel like you need this type of product and all the brands are benefiting from it. Not long before we were obsessing over cream blushes, we had, uh, you know, the feathered brows were really huge for a while. Um, putting fake freckles on was huge for a while. Uh, there's, there's different trends that come and go and there's nothing wrong with wanting your makeup to be on trend. What happens is though, is that we end up buying things that we don't need in order to create a trend that only lasts for two weeks. And then we have the product and it's like, what am I gonna do with it? I didn't even want this product. I just did it to make the trend and now the trend's over. Now what do I do with it? Lip oils, for example, have been a huge thing for a while, but literally how many lip oils do we need? They're mostly completely sheer. There's hardly any color to them. They're oily. Lip products, like how, how many do we really need? And do we need them from multiple brands? That's the question you gotta ask yourself. So my point is just because a lip oil or whatever it is, a cream blush or whatever is trendy, doesn't mean you need all of them from all of the brands. Like maybe I have, you know, a cream blush from these four brands, but I don't know about the cream blush from this brand. Like I'm thinking Road Beauty that just came out with a cream blush. Do we need to try that one so we can compare it? Do you really need it? Do you need to compare it? to the ones you already have really and truly? Or is it just gonna sit there? Think about your past purchasing decisions, evaluate. How much, how many of your products are sitting there because they were on trend at one point and are now on, not on trend? And no shame because I'm surrounded by products, okay? <laughs> I'm surrounded by products, both PR and ones that I've purchased with my hard earned money that I purchased because they were on trend and they are no longer on trend and I no longer use them. I used to do this a lot when I was reviewing products in that I would buy $150, $200 worth of products. I would have time to review about half of them before the other half were out of trend or they were considered old because they were a month old. And now I have $100 worth of product that I you know, might casually use, but I'm not gonna create a video over it. I've done it myself. And it just, it's not financially a great thing to do. It's marketing, it's a trap. So in the end, what I've been doing recently is before I purchase anything, whether it's in the makeup space or somewhere else, is this going to bring me short-term joy or long-term joy? <laughs> What is this going to give me? And I'm who am I listening to that's going to tell me whether this is going to give me short-term joy or long-term joy? Who am I listening to? Am I listening to a salesperson or am I listening to a reviewer? All of that being evaluated before I make that purchasing decision so that I don't end up with regret and I end up being able to spend my money on the things that will actually bring me joy because it adds up. That purchase here and that purchase there and that purchase there can add up to a lot of money of something you could really, really buy that you really, really, really want. Maybe it means cutting down on your makeup purchases to the point where you can take that extra money and go on a vacation. You know what I'm saying? It can really add up. Some people though do buy trendy products for a different reason. And the reason why they buy them is to purchase on social media because they have the goal of being an influencer. And that's the next trap. Whether some people want to admit it or not, being an influencer is an actual job. It's an actual career that people go into. I can tell you that because it has been my career for the past, I don't know, six, seven, eight years, a long time, a while, 2016, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, eight years, eight years, this has been my job and my career. And I have some data for you on this. In the summer of 2023, survey company, The Morning Consult, polled over 3,000 Gen Zers and millennials about whether or not, given the chance, would they want to become an influencer? 57% of Gen Zers said yes. Of the people over 18 years old, 41% said that they would wanna be an influencer. So this is not just young kids, this is also legal adults. Of course, not all of the people who would be an influencer given the chance are actually going to attempt to be influencers, but there is a section of people who are actively trying to make influencing their career. And those are the ones that are falling into the next trap. One of the ways to grow on social media, especially in short form content is haul videos is going out and purchasing a massive amount of beauty products specifically at least in our space and then sharing that haul and what you can do with that haul is you can then turn that into individual pieces of content you can tag the brand maybe the brand will repost you all of that and those haul videos are very well watched across social media where people can live vicariously through this person who has the means or at least they seem to have the means 
in order to spend three, four, five hundred dollars in a haul at Sephora or at Ulta or at Target or wherever that money is being spent. Where it's being spent is irrelevant. The fact is, is they're spending hundreds of dollars just to make short form content with it. And the problem with this that nobody tells these people, and I will tell you because I've been doing this for 12 years, is that that's a trap. I support anybody's dream to be an influencer. Absolutely welcome to our space. Like genuinely and truly welcome to our space. I, I welcome you with open arms. Please come in, make your content. You're great. But please do not spend $500 in order to make one short form video or even a selection of five or six short form videos because you're not going to get your return on investment. You're not getting that $500 back. It's not going to happen. The smartest way to grow a beauty platform is to spend as little money as possible, hopefully spending no money because you're going to use the products that you already have whenever possible. And if you cannot use the products you already have, you're going to buy one thing, just one thing. And it's, and, and you're going to use that intuitive mind. You're going to use your knowledge of trends. You're going to use that smarts about the beauty space, whatever expertise you have to pick that one product. And you are going to create pieces of content off of that one thing you purchased. And hopefully that is a lower cost product. There are a lot of extremely low cost products that are very trendy that you can purchase and make just as big of an impact as if you spent a hundred dollars on a product. Because this is the hard truth about being influenced influencer. These platforms don't care how hard you work. They don't care how much money you spent. They don't care. All these platforms care about is the eyes on your content. And in the case of YouTube, how long those eyes are watching you. That's all they care about because that is going to lead to ad revenue. And in the case of brands, it's going to lead to purchasing of their products. That's all that matters. You could work 40 hours a week on your content and make $0 for 40 hours a week. So you need to work smarter, not harder. And the way you're gonna work smarter is you're gonna buy low cost, trendy products, one or two at the most, and you're going to make multiple pieces of content off of those couple of things. You're also going to be very selective over which brands you choose. You're going to target specific brands that you want to develop relationships with, brands that you really enjoy, that you know are active on social media and may be looking for new influencers to partner with. And you are going to only, for your content, only purchase from those brands and only tag those brands really and truly focus on them for whatever period of time you feel like is a good period of time to try to get them into your content, to maybe get on PR or get an affiliate link. Figure out what you want from them and go after it. And if after a period of time you're still not being noticed, cut that brand out, move on to a new brand, but not spending $500 on a haul. That is a terrible idea because you, you're not going to get your money back from that. Because the truth is the short form content on its own, on its face, pays nothing compared to the long form content on YouTube. The other thing you're going to do is you are going to make sure it is good quality content. You're going to look on their social media, these brands that you want to work with, and you are going to see the level of quality that they are reposting, the level of quality they're looking for, and you are going to strive for that level. Because if your quality of your content is not at that level, they're not going to repost you no matter how much you've spent, no matter how many pieces of content that you've made. If it's not of high enough quality, they're not going to give you what you want. Too many people that want to get into influencing aren't thinking of the long game. They are getting in, they're going in hard and then they're running out of money or they're running out of effort and energy because the brands just aren't giving them the attention that they expected and then they're disappointed and they think that there's something wrong with them and that they did something wrong. The only thing that people are doing wrong is that they're not thinking about the long game and they're burning themselves out both mentally and financially. Let's be honest, it is fun to just blow money with a justification. <laughs> Whatever that justification is, just go and go on a shopping spree. That is freaking fun, man. It is enjoyable. But then you have to live with the consequences of that spend. And if you are charging it on a credit card, then you're living with even more consequences than you would have been if you had just paid outright. Because like we talked about earlier, interest rates are madness. And building on some of these other traps, if you're only creating content for a trend, that video is going to die pretty quickly. It's only going to live as long as that trend lives. So 
if you invest a hundred dollars in recreating a trend how long is that video going to be watchable for your audience or relevant for your audience you have to take that into consideration again if you want to be an influencer amazing I'm so happy for you. I'm so excited for you. I hope that you do so, so well. But work smarter, not harder. Spend less money, not more money. And really have a goal and be focused going into it of how you're going to get into this as a job and not just spend money for no reason because it's it, they don't owe you anything. These platforms don't owe you your money back. You have to be responsible for that path that you go on. And I see a lot of people ending their influencer careers before they start because they are just so sad that it didn't work out. But they, it's because they didn't start with a strategy. They just went and dumped a bunch of money into it. And when it didn't work out in three or four four months, they gave up on it. It's all about the long game when it comes to becoming an influencer and doing this as a job. It has to be about the long game. And if you're not in it for the long game, then creating content for fun with products that you already have may be a great way to enjoy creating content on social media without making it a career because it doesn't have to be a career for you to post on social media. You can do it just for fun. It's totally fine. And then maybe you'll get noticed by a brand and get on a PR list as you're doing it for fun. Wouldn't that be ideal? And you didn't spend 500 bucks to do it. In conclusion, I am a big believer in freedom. Your freedom to do what you choose to do as long as you are not hurting others. And the way you spend your money, I am 100% for you spending your money in a way that brings you joy. You have earned it. You have worked hard and it is your money. But as you are spending it, know that everybody wants your money. <laughs> Everybody wants it. You have earned it. You're holding it. You're holding the money and everybody wants you to part with it in their direction. And the question is, when you give up this money, what are you getting in return? What are you getting for that money, for that those hours that you spend at your job? What are you getting back for it? We all need things to survive and we need to pay for those things. And salespeople know this. They know that we have needs. And that's when they get in our faces and say, you need this, you need this. But it is our job to look at it and go, okay, do I really need this? Do I really, really need this? Because they're gonna tell you you need it. All the people that are obsessed over the latest blush and the people that are obsessed over the new foundation, they're telling you you need it. But do you really? That's where the conscious consumerism comes in and where when we get off for jobs and we're tired, we're easy targets. We're easy targets for this manipulation. So it's just taking that extra mental second that is so hard to do after a long day sometimes and really discerning and thinking about, do I actually need this? Or do I just want it? And if I want it, will it bring me joy? And in that, will it bring me temporary joy or will it bring me long-term joy? Because we're going for long-term joy here. We don't want to look at a collection of makeup and go, what do I even do with this stuff? I spent so much money on it. I wish I had that money for something else. We're trying to avoid that. And part of avoiding that is knowing how companies are manipulating us and trying to get us to spend our money in ways that we did not intend in ways that we will regret later because it's not they don't they're not thinking about us they are trying to get money for their own wants and needs they're not thinking about your wants and needs so they set up traps for us they set up traps for us to fall into and I hope that you found the identification of these five traps helpful and I know I didn't get everything I know I missed things so if you have traps that I did not mention I would love to know your thoughts in the comments down below of any Anything I did mention, anything I didn't mention, what's been your experience with marketing traps? How has that worked out for you? What are some things you're doing to either support your conscious consumerism or to build to being a more conscious consumer? I would love to know any of that in the comment section down below. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you would like to support this channel in a very free way, thumbs up button really does help me out a lot. Like I mentioned earlier, also leaving a comment really does help me out so much sharing this video with your friends which I didn't mention this earlier sharing this video with people that you think might benefit from it that would be amazing because that is a free way to support this channel and to continue helping me continue to make this content full-time and if you would like to watch another video of mine because that also helps me YouTube should be recommending a couple of videos over here to watch and you might enjoy it too I'm gonna put one down here for you that I think that you're gonna enjoy YouTube's gonna pick the top video based on
on your current viewing history. But if you do have to go, I get it. It is no problem. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did. Mad love to you. Enjoy your money and I will see you in a video very, very soon.